What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Austin in China coming at you from Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province. Life is good. Life is good. I was looking at some of the comments from the last live stream, and a lot of the comments had to do with the camera quality or the fact that things were shaking and this and that. So, you know, when I when I do these streams now, I'm going to try to be cognizant of the fact that the camera could be shaking and that uh, it doesn't make a lot of people happy. You know, it doesn't make a lot of people happy. All right, we have our first viewer tuning in. Thank you very much for tuning in. Who is it? Where are you watching from? So, yeah, I do actually read the comments. I do actually go back and watch these live streams because I think it's important to know what I'm doing wrong and what I'm doing right. Right? I mean, I, I feel like that's important. So camera shake was an issue that was noted. And um, I definitely, like, you know, sympathize with that. You know, as someone who watches YouTube myself, um, I am going to buy a gimbal uh, at some point. At some point, but dude, gimbals are like 200 bucks. I only make like $40 from YouTube a month or something like that. And that's including Patreon and stuff. So, you know, am I going to spend $200, $300 on a, on a platform that I only make 20 bucks a month on, or sorry, 40 bucks a month on? That doesn't seem really worth it, um, at least not at the moment. But hey, all right, finally, there we go. We got a few more people. We got six viewers going on all right well yeah i mean that's that's true you can't please everyone that's true but you know there's a difference between people like criticizing you and people critiquing you you know critiquing people is important that's important you know if there's something that needs to be addressed it's you know it should be addressed hey what's up boo boo yeah oh, that sounds weird uh, minnesota yeah, Los Angeles, fantastic. Got a couple of people calling in from the States. Fantastic. All right. So, you know, this stream today is going to be about what makes me unhappy in China. Things that I do not enjoy about living here. Things that maybe aren't so good about living here. And, you know, the last stream was about things that made me happy. So I figured let's flip it on its head and let's talk about things that make me unhappy, things that I do not like about living in China. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let's flip around the camera and I'll show you the first one. Or, I mean, or the most obvious thing right here is just construction, right? Construction. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but it is a nice view of the Chengdu skyline or at least part of the Chengdu skyline right there. That is the Marco Polo Bridge, the Anshun Chiao. Um, it's been rebuilt, but it is, a, um, it is the original location where Marco Polo crossed this river when he was in Chengdu all those years ago. Look, there's that green wall. That green wall that is everywhere. But yeah, so it looks like they're creating a new level in the river. They're going to, you know, the river has all these like different levels to it to control the amount of water that goes through. So I'm guessing that's just another level that they're, that they're built, that, that they're uh, building. Oh, Lan Kwai Fong. Lan Kwai Fong is uh, down that way. You cannot see Lan Kwai Fong from here. So there is the uh, Bar Street. So it's different. The Bar Street, the Jiobaji is on this side and Lan Kwai Fong is over this way. But, yeah, so I've prepared a few things that I want to talk about um, when it comes to living in China, things that um, I do not enjoy. First one, the most obvious one, is pollution, right? Pollution. It's quick. You know, it's obvious. It's like, oh, yeah, obviously I don't want to be breathing in some nasty air. I don't want to be um, – I don't want to have to worry about um, – you know, tainted food. I don't want to have to worry about water pollution. I don't want to have to worry about that stuff, right? Um, and it is it is a concern, you know, not just like pollution maybe, but like additives. Wait, if I flip the camera around this way. Hey, there we go. All right. 
uh, you know, worrying about so many different additives. And I realized that that is a thing kind of everywhere. Um, but it is just something that I feel like it does. Like I said in my video about living in Tianjin, this whole thing about, um, about pollution, it slowly chips away at you. It does slowly chip away at you. Um, and it does tend to, you know, make people unhappy. And I am people, so it makes me unhappy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, here, I'm going to get off the bridge real quick. So, yeah, and this, these walls that are up everywhere, like I said before, construction, construction, construction. But it is like a means to an end, right? At least the construction part. Um, now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull over right here, flip the camera around, and we're going to tour kind of a newer area of Chengdu. Now, one of my patrons, he's a brand new patron, actually. He's at the highest level, $7 level. Uh, yeah, $7 is the highest level on my Patreon, so it's not that much. But you get things like video calls and video suggestions and things like that. Um, so... What he is interested in seeing, his name is uh, Justin. He's from Chengdu, living in the States. And um, what he's interested in seeing is kind of new stuff in Chengdu because he's from Chengdu but hasn't been back in a couple years. So he wants to see what the city is like, um, what some of the newer developments um, in the city are. And this is something that I do want to talk about. Uh, in one way, I'm going to, how can I say this, this one, it's sort of this one. China is always changing. It is. And that's a thing that, um, it is a pro. Absolutely. It was in my pro list earlier, uh, or I say earlier in my last stream, things do always change. Like this road, the first ring road used to be my favorite road in Chengdu. Uh, used to have trees like this, like a big lane of trees in the middle. And then they tore it down, and then they made this tunnel, which is actually super convenient. It's really good. But I do miss seeing those trees in the middle of the street. They had palm trees, and they had all these kinds of flowers. And, oh, it was beautiful, and it felt like kind of a small-town road in the middle of Chengdu. Like, I get that they have to expand it, and they've got to make it a little bit better. Uh, for traffic because this is a big big place, but I miss that feeling that I used to get coming down this road this kind of peaceful quiet feeling and uh, I mentioned in the last live stream that your favorite restaurants are going to close your favorite places Will close your favorite people your friends will leave they will go away Your co-workers will go away. You may go away. You may go to a different place and that hurts you know that hurts uh all this change especially the part about saying goodbye to people hurts and it's not fun um but it's a real it's a real thing and i, I suppose that's an expat concern no matter where you live right here <laughs> this <laughs> this sign has seen better days even though it's brand new so this is something new um as we come in through this way we're going to head towards Music Street. And this right here is going to be a music market. This is brand new. This only was finished just before the Spring Festival. And these are Spring Festival lanterns and stuff right here. Um, so, yeah. So right here it says, Jia Kuai Jian Shu Mei Li Yi Ji Gong Yuan Cheng Shu. So, like, the park city is the thing that says at the bottom. And it says, let's hurry up and make a beautiful Idri. I'm not sure what that means. Um, but yeah, let's hurry up and make Chengdu beautiful, I guess is the, the kind of summary for this. Um, but yeah, I guess that also, I've never seen that before, but that actually does, like I've never seen this installation. This is brand new. Um, but I guess that does actually add to what I'm saying is that we need, like we need to hurry up and make Chengdu beautiful. Do we really need to hurry, though? You know, sometimes I really enjoy the older parts of the city. Um, it adds a bit of charm and character and makes the city unique, you know? Um, 
yeah, you don't have to necessarily make things super, super modern, super, super quickly. And it's funny because sometimes they'll like make a development, they'll make a little park or they'll like open up a road and then they'll immediately close it again because they want to build something. Um, yeah, that's, that's a weird one. Uh, so yeah, things will change. Things will change. China is always changing your friends, the restaurants, your jobs, your, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I'm almost done with my bronchitis. I'm almost done. Um, but I'm still a little bit, still a little bit sick. Here we go. Music. And look, they painted the, they put these things on the buildings and you got these little blocks here. This is nice, right? This is nice. Whoops. Sorry. This is nice. Um, I like this. So hopefully Justin's going to enjoy this little bit. So yeah, this is also new. This has only been open for a couple of months. So Chengdu in Yue Fang, some musical fun. Musical fun. I like it. So here, like we're getting, we're, we're around the Chengdu Music School. So it's called Chuan Yin. So it's like the Chengdu, uh, you know, musical college, Chengdu. It's like an arts um, and performance college. Um, so that's why all this is here. So it's going to, what Chengdu is hoping to do is to give students a, um, <laughs> the hope, hopefully is going to give Chengdu students or students at that uni in particular, a platform, a place, a venue to perform and exhibit their art and things like that. Oh, this looks like some sort of high school. This is a new building as well. Everything in this particular area is brand new. Um, yeah, it's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. This is my first time kind of staying here and looking around. Um, but so at least right now in how I feel, this new stuff is a pro, but it does wear on you eventually. You do get tired of everything, you know, shutting down and opening and reopening. What's going on? Bitcoin is mooning. <laughs> Bitcoin is mooning. I finally catch you live. All right. So, yeah, we are looking at some of the newer areas of town. So I want to get back into some of the things now. On one hand, it is really nice living here. But on the other hand, it is really easy to stagnate here. You feel like, I've been thinking about this in the last day or two. You feel like you're always getting better. You feel like you're always improving. You feel like, well, you know, you feel like everything is changing in your life and you're progressing. But, you know, that may not necessarily be true. It may not necessarily be true because you may feel that way because the city that you live in is changing so quickly. And you're like, well, obviously I'm changing with the city. But people forget that, you know, as life goes on, you do need to grow professionally. And I guess that's what I mean by stagnate. I mean stagnate professionally because it is super comfortable here. Oh, so there it is. Sichuan Inyue. Shenyuan. Sichuan Conservatory of Music. So there is the music school right there. And the area is just kind of around here. They just, the uh, the expat community just calls it Music Street. And I think the local people call it Music Street as well because there are all these shops where you can buy sheet music. You can take classes to play guitar or to buy uh, instruments. So this is a piano shop right here. Uh, there's another piano shop right here. So, yeah, it's, it's easy to stagnate here because, you know, you feel like you're learning and you're growing, and you are most certainly learning and growing personally, but you may not be growing professionally because people will take a job at a training school or a university or wherever, and they'll have the same job title for three years, four years, five years, or more. And then when it comes time to maybe move on, they realize they've wasted maybe more time than they should have in that particular area. And then they realize, oh, I should have been 
working at getting another credential. I should have been working at getting another certificate. I should have been working on my master's. Um, I've met so many people who have had that experience. And to a degree, I am having that, wow, okay. And to a degree, I'm having that experience right now. Like I said, things are changing, scaffolding, scaffolding. Things are getting cut down. <laughs> so, yeah, it is easy to stagnate. So I would say if you're going to come to China, then you need to be careful. You need to be careful uh, and always be cognizant of the fact that um, things, you know, there, that there is, sorry, hold on a second. There is a kind of, there is still a life that you need to, you know, be cognizant of, you know, whether or not you're happy personally, you know, that, that, I mean, it's a good thing to be happy personally, but you always need to be moving up professionally. Don't let yourself stagnate in China. It's a big, it's a really big, important thing. Um, so, all right. Now, uh, let me check a couple of comments. Let's see. Uh, chance to watch the mountain clusters in West Sichuan from Chengdu. Um, I've seen a couple of the mountains from Chengdu, but, uh, but like where I live, it's much easier to see uh, the mountains in the east than the mountains in the west because I live in the eastern part of the city. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what NIO means. Apologies. I don't know what NIO means. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what we're going to do next is we are going to talk about, ah, shields up against scammers. Shields up. Absolutely. This is a thing that drives me crazy about living here. Um, it's, it's a fact that if you are not really savvy, if you don't know your stuff, if you don't do your research... People are going to take such advantage of you. I mean, you are going to get taken for a wild ride. I have seen it happen over and over and over again. Um, people coming to China so excited, you know, bright eyes, ready for the experience of living abroad. And then they get here and then they get employed with an agency. They get employed with some training school or they get employed with some people that they have no business, you know, um, being in business with. Um, but, you know, they're just so enthusiastic. They don't do their research. And the thing is, like, there are so many people here that want to take advantage of foreigners who don't know the language and who don't know the customs, who don't know what they're worth, who don't know um, anything about it. So if they don't if people don't do their research, it's so easy to get taken advantage of. And that really sucks, to be honest. It really sucks, to be honest. Um, I, don't, I don't enjoy that. Um, just being real. Just being real. Um, just being real. Hey, Arthur's back. Arthur's back. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Sh what is Shanfu New? You mean Tianfu New District? Um, yeah, that's something that um, that my new patron kind of brought up was he wanted to see the new areas of Chengdu. And um, I find that boring, but it is probably important because the government is going to move down to Chengdu, which is another thing that makes me unhappy. Um, Tianfu Xinchu, Tianfu New Area is not Chengdu. Come on. Chengdu is within the second and third ring road. That is Chengdu. That is a heart of this city that I love. Why are you going to move it down to this soulless, like office block area? There's no soul in, in that part of Chengdu. I don't, I don't like that. So uh, let's see. All right. So we're going to, we're going to keep it going. I forgot what I was talking about. All ah, right. Shields up against scammers. That's right. So here, I'm going to do this because these buildings have a nice color to them. I like that. So there you go. See, so yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing, prepare to get scammed. Like recruit some recruiters and headhunters agencies 
will take part of your salary. They'll take part of your salary, maybe even the majority of your salary. They will, and they'll have no qualms about it. They will put you in places that pay them the most, not necessarily the places that you, oh, this is nice right here. This is nice. Okay. They will put you in places that they've been paid uh, the most. It's like, uh, it's not according to your preference, not according to what you need or what you want in your career. They'll do this or do that. Or um, employers will not follow the contract and things like that. So scammers are a huge, huge concern. This is cool. See, so yeah, here we go. So this is a just a like a rough outline of Chengdu. You can see the rivers in blue right there. You can see um, this is the place. So this is right here, Chengdu in Yuefang. This is right where we're at right now. Chuanju, Sichuan Opera, um, Wuhou, which is Wuhou Temple. We've got there Wangjiang Lo, which is Wangjiang Lo Park. And uh, that's my favorite park in all of China. I've got a video about that. Uh, there's the music school, Sichuan in Yue Shui Yuan. And we've got Chuan Xiu, got Quan Jai Xiangzi, so Quan Jai Alleyways. And, uh, we've got Da Xiong Mao, the panda base. What is this? Gai Wan Cha. Gai Wan Cha. So it's a, just a tea that's in a, it's in a, like a cup and it's covered. It's like in a bowl and then they cover it with a, uh, with a top. It's, it's a, it's an old thing. And then this says Rongcheng, which is Chengdu. That's cool. So this is a new, I remember this is a, this is the first time I've ever been down here. So you're going to discover this with me. I've been down here. So, um, yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. I think I've said enough about scammers because, I mean, I think we all know. I think we all know that, you know, any, any sort of developing country, any developing country, especially a developing country that's going to have uh, a lot of, you know, potential for, for foreigners coming in, yeah, there's going to be people willing to take advantage of it. Ooh, look at this. Single party. Okay. Wow, this is awesome. Oh, check this out. So, um, yeah, that's something I definitely don't enjoy about, about uh, living here. Let's see what's next. What's next on my list? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's talk about this. So, <laughs> this makes me maybe the craziest of all. Okay. This, oh, shit. Okay. I just said a bad word. I'm going to get demonetized. So, the entire hour of my live stream will probably be demonetized because I said one bad word. Thanks, YouTube. This is why I have channel members and patrons. So this is nice here. This is nice in paintings. Unorganized and visionless workplaces. Oh my God, where do I even begin? Yes, in China, the thing seems to be like, let's hire people first and then figure things out later. At least when it comes to foreign teachers. When it comes to foreign teachers, that definitely seems to be the rule rather than the exception. You will not see, I don't know if this car is coming through here or not. If it is, I'm going to move it, move this over. So things are so unorganized here. Um, they're so unorganized. It drives me absolutely crazy. Um, hey, from Hong Kong, Bowen. Yes. Been a while since I've seen you in the comments. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So. Uh, Ah, all right. Yes, the thing is, man, um, foreign teachers are so important here in China, at least in the, um, at least right now. They're, they're so important, foreign teachers are, but they're also kind of treated as second-class citizens, sort of, so to speak. 
second class teachers because regardless of where you work, uh, the priority will always be given to the local staff. Priority will always be given to the local staff in whatever subjects they are teaching. Um, whether that be at a university or at a high school, you know, middle school, whatever, the priority will always be on those people, not necessarily you, because they think, oh, you're just teaching a language. So what they'll do is they'll often put foreigners, foreign teachers, in their own departments. Uh, they'll put them in their own kind of departments and sequester them away. And what they'll do is they'll just kind of leave the foreigners to their own devices. Okay. I mean, that's nice in terms of academic freedom and being able to teach what you want. But you often don't have a lot of local staff supervising you and kind of giving you guidance and giving you a vision to kind of follow, a vision um, to kind of push you into making, um, to creating a better curriculum, creating better lessons, using new techniques. You don't get a ton of training. Um, not continuous training, continual, continual professional development as a teacher, generally speaking, doesn't exist here. Very generally speaking, I should say. Um, if you're working at, let's say, an international school where you're teaching IB or AP, things like this, then yes, professional development will continue. There will be continual training. But the general public school in China, no way. It's not going to happen. What's going on, Lucas? Hope everything is going well with you. Oh, we used to hang out on the snark lounge. Yeah, I um, I can't, I, I couldn't do the snark lounge for a long time because um, because of my schedule. Uh, but now I think I can, I can do it. Now I think I can do it. Um. Oh, can I do that? Okay, well that's good. That's good. And yeah, I'm just gonna. I mean, I think I'm about done, but. Yeah, that the whole thing about working here and oh, I forgot also about unorganized. Um, there are so many, there are so many times where you will be told about a meeting, you will be told about an activity, you will be told about something that you absolutely have to do right now something that's kind of difficult <laughs> or something that will require a lot of planning and a lot of time, but you're told that you have to do this right now. Well, you know, you could have told me about it yesterday. Well, yeah, well, we didn't think of it yesterday. We just thought of it just now, but you have to do it. It's so important. Oh, if it was so important, you probably should have told me about it before, you know, and this is so common throughout China. Um, I've only ever been in like one really well managed department in all my my time in China, a department that actually sort of had a vision and supported its foreign teachers. Um, just one, yeah, just one that actually like notified me about events and uh, guided me through my teaching process and kind of helped me learn the job, you know. Uh, so unorganized and visionless workplaces is a huge thing that makes me unhappy here because I think having so many foreign teachers could, could really change China's language education and could open a lot of people's minds if they just like had a vision. Oh man, I just, yeah, it, it really does make me sad. It really does make me sad. And speaking of that, a thing I want to talk about is, that also makes me unhappy is seeing children without childhoods. Whoop. Because in China, the, you know, there's so many people, right? There's so many students. There's so many, there's so many students and there's so few schools relative the, to the amount of students here in China, so, so few, um, that, you know, just a couple of quick examples, not everyone can go to college, even if they get good scores, because there just 
aren't enough spots at universities in China. There just aren't. So even if you, you know, try your hardest and you get an okay score on that college entrance exam, you still might not be able to go. Even if you have the money, even if you got an okay score, because there just aren't enough spots. You definitely can't choose the universities you go to necessarily. I mean, you can put, you can apply for them, but that university might not have spots for you. Um, there's just so much competition in China for everything. And this includes primary schools, or sorry, it includes kindergartens, it includes primary schools, middle schools, high schools. Every level of Chinese education is super competitive. If you want to go to even a, like an okay school, um, and that's just because of the population here. There's just so many people that competition is fierce. And because the competition is so fierce, um, students have to go to these training schools after school. They have so many extra classes after school is already over. And doesn't that suck? You know, like you go to school and then you think, you know, oh, I'm done. I'm done with school. Uh, I can go home and I can relax. Well, no, you're going to go from school to your training school. And then from your training school, you're going to go back home. And then you're going you're gonna to do your homework. And then you're going to do your homework until, you know, midnight. And then you're going to wake up at 6 a.m. And then you're going to keep studying. Or you might go back to school. Some, ooh, that's cool. Some schools start as early as 650. You know, they start, they get to school at 650, uh, which is bonkers to me. So these kids don't have childhoods. Uh, They're studying all the time. It's one reason why I quit doing private. I wish these umbrellas weren't here. It's one reason I quit doing private, um, private teaching because I just realized all these kids are so tired. They're so tired and they don't have any time to be a kid. Um, it's sad. It's probably the thing that makes me the, the saddest on this list of things. Um, it's the thing that makes me the unhappiest. But at the same time, I understand. You know, with the competition, how do you get ahead of the competition? You know, there's no other way to go about it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you earn tons of money in private teaching. That's absolutely true. But there is a sort of... I don't feel like... I don't feel good about private teaching, though, just because I don't want to contribute to that problem of kids not having a childhood. I don't want to be part of that problem. So I can forego that extra money. I can forego that extra money and then focus on things like maybe YouTube, for example. Uh, and I'll do my own thing. I can make a tiny, tiny bit of money on YouTube. Like I said, I make probably 40, maybe $50 a month on YouTube, including Patreon and all that. Uh, like it's, it's not a lot, but it's something. Um, and it's a, it's a creative hobby. It gives me something to do. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be part of that problem. Um, if that makes sense, you know, I hope that makes sense. And I hope that people can understand that. Like, I know the problem's not going to go away. Um, but, you know, I just don't want to, I don't want to add to it. I don't want to add to it. So, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah, cram schools. That's what they're called. That's what they're called. Okay. So, yeah, that. <laughs> Let's move on to a funny one. I like this one. Selfish or entitled old people. <laughs> Selfish or entitled old people. Doesn't that make you crazy? <laughs> Maybe not. If you don't live here, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. And that's fine. Um, but... Old people here suck, right? Not all of them, of course, but they're, and, and like the parentheses that I put there, but can I really blame them? I'll talk about that in a second. 
old people are so entitled here. They're so nasty here. The way that they act, the way that they speak, the way that they behave is so nasty and like unbecoming of like, you know, unbecoming of what the younger generation uh, are like. And it's unbecoming of this new image China is trying to portray. Oh, it's nasty. Um, now, what I mean by that, I've got to park up somewhere. My arm is getting so tired. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that? Like old people tend to have the worst behavior. And I'll talk about why, the, why it's this way. And I'll talk about why I can't really blame them in a bit. So um, old people tend to have the worst behavior. They will smoke and blow smoke in your face in restaurants where there are no smoking signs. They spit. Um, they yell at people. They have no qualms about yelling at people and getting in fights over super petty things. They have no qualms about like cutting in line just because they're old or yelling at somebody that they're entitled to cut the line just because they're old. Uh, like there's so many things that old people do that is, that is, it's just not cool. Not cool, bro. Now. Okay. Now I've said this, I've said this and I'm saying it, <laughs> I've said this and I'm saying it, but the thing is, can you really blame them? Can you really blame them? Whoop. <laughs> now my kind of, Gut feeling is, well, yeah, because they're adults and they are responsible for their own actions and stuff. But also, at the same time, I feel like I can't blame them because of where they come from. Or I should say when they come from. Now, sorry, hold on. This is a new format I'm experimenting with, this e-bike this e -bike tour format. So you're going to have to be... You're going to have to be patient. <laughs> so what happened? Okay, there we go. So I can't blame old people because, you know, they come from a different time. They come from a different China. They, like, don't, they didn't grow up in a time like this. They grew up in a whole different country, essentially. Um, they grew up, you know, like a lot of the old people now, they grew up in the 1960s, 1950s, 1970s. And these were some, some dark times in China. You know, the sixties were dark times and parts of the seventies were also dark times. And before like China was, was, you know, considerably, you know, less well off before and China and, and you know, there were things about that society that encouraged really nasty behavior um, and contributed to this sort of me first mentality. And, you know, that's what they, that's what they grew up with. So, and that's what they were taught was a good thing. They were encouraged to be that way. So can you blame them for sticking with that? I mean, I guess not really. I guess not really, because we are all sort of formed, um, you know, at that age, you know, you know, from from childhood to about what, 15. And then we're kind of that way for for life. Not always. But yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. Old people are nasty, but you have to be understanding and you have to be patient and not be angry. And you got to realize the things that are in your control and the things that are out of your control. And you got to realize what sort of fights are worth it. You know, are you willing to die on, you know, that hill? So, um, you know, I'm not, yeah. And that's the other thing. And it's not just China. I mean, there are Karens and crazy uncles in the States too. Um, it's just, it, it's a much, hmm. but you have a whole generation of, of, old people in China who didn't go to school. And that's not true in the States, which is why it's probably there's less of an issue in the States than here, because you have that lost generation here in China uh, that missed out on school in the 60s and early 70s. They just, like, they missed out on school. That sucks. Um, 
So there you go. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's fine. You can you can respectfully disagree. Um, that's okay. So, and also, yes, that's another thing. That's the other thing. Oh my God. When I walk down the street and I see older people, like really old people, like actual old people, like people who are like, oh my God, that guy is, that guy is on his way out. When I see those people, I think about what have those people experienced? You know, someone who grew up in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and they're living in Chengdu now? Oh my God, what must that have been like? You know, like my father remembers Chairman Mao on the news. Just my father. My father remembers Chairman Mao on the news. And think about that China versus this China. What Chengdu would have looked like at that time or Beijing or Shanghai or, Sh or Shenzhen was just a fishing village until like the 80s. Um, but like think about what has happened and the amount of change that these old people have seen. Good Lord. Good Lord, I cannot imagine that. Uh, so that's the thing. We can we can talk about like old people being really, really nasty and all this all day long. It's fine. But we have to also take a second and be empathetic and be sympathetic to like the life experience that these people have had. Oh, my God. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. Um, so that's the thing. Hey, class in new member, new member. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. That's the first time I've ever seen this message come up. <laughs> if I want to check my channel members, I have to actually go in to the settings and, and see that. So class in, you've just become, I hope I'm saying that right. So uh, you've just be, uh, joined there. If you want the discord, uh, there are links in the community tab. And also, um, you know, I'll put up another little thing later about that. Um, I'll put up another little community post about that. But, yeah, thank you very much for becoming a member. Um, you you know, you help keep this channel going. And uh, it's great. It's great. Um, hey, and there's Bobby. He's another channel member. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's nice to to try and make a little money on YouTube for a change. You know, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been in China. 10 years. This is a finger symbol for 10 in China. 10 years I've been here. It's nice to, you know, 10 years I've been vlogging. It's nice to get a little recognition. It's nice. So, yes, that as well. Like older people on the metro, that's a trip as well. Yeah, because old people and me tend to do the same thing on the metro. We kind of sit there. And I tend to think. I use my time on the metro to think about things or maybe to plan things um, or to read something. Uh, it's me and the old people who are doing that. Everyone else is playing like a Chinese version of Candy Crush or they're playing some like PUBG Mobile or they're playing like some other game. Like it's, yeah, it's absolutely, um, yeah, it's, it's, it sucks. Um, it sucks seeing that because like literally everyone under the age of like 50 is on their phone. Smartphone addiction is such a big problem here. Um, and I'm sure that's not just a Chinese thing. I'm sure that's that's everywhere. So there we go. Okay. There we go. Let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through this one real quick. I'm gonna move the uh, the tripod and I apologize for any camera shake that there may be. Because again, I don't have a gimbal. I don't have a stabilizer. I'm going to work on it. China cannot seem to make up its mind on whether or not the pandemic is over. And that's sort of driving me crazy. <laughs> that's sort of driving me crazy because you see, in the small towns, most people are walking around without masks. There's virtually no masks anymore in the small towns because there's no more, uh, there's no more pandemic. Here, let's do this. There we go. But in the big cities, they, they can't seem to decide whether or not you should wear a mask. In this place, you might have to, but in this place, you don't have to. In, you know, in this area, like hospitals, definitely wear masks. Like public transportation, sure, okay. 
But then there are all these other weird little rules. You have to scan a QR code so that contact, contact tracers can find you later um, if there's an outbreak. Um, you know, and only like there, this place, most places don't require that anymore. But there are some places that still require it. Where you have to show a health code and scan to get into a mall. And then when you get into a mall, the shops in the mall also require you to scan. It's like, no, I'm not doing that. Like, can we just decide if the pandemic's over or not? Because I'll abide by whatever rules. But it's just like, can we figure out where we stand and have some uniform standards? Because it seems to me that having uniform standards is really the key to, you know, figuring all this out. Don't, don't, oh, and in my wife's hometown, Everything's far more strict than in Chengdu. Chengdu's way more open about everything than in her hometown, which has like no risk whatsoever. Um, I think we just need to decide. <laughs> I think we just need to decide. Okay. And the last one, the last thing that makes me unhappy, and that is, I mean, seeing old China disappear. It is nice to to have these new areas and to uh, experience a lot of change. Like I said in the beginning, it's a pro and it's a con. It's nice to experience all this, but at the same time, it's uh, it's sad. It's sad seeing the old school buildings torn down. It's sad seeing the little alleyways disappear and make way for this. While this is really cool and everything, I do also miss those those areas. And like, there's not a lot of um, protection for certain types of neighborhoods. There's not a lot of, like some areas are very well protected actually, but some areas not so much. They're just knock down, we gotta build a high rise. Knock it down, we gotta build an office building. Knock it down, we gotta do this. Um, I just worry about China trying to develop too fast, you know, because I love this place and I love old China. I love seeing the traditional buildings, the traditional architecture, the sort of, you know, the throwbacks. That's why I like to go to so many of those ancient towns. And I'm going to be going on ancient town trips uh, this year because uh, I think in March they're going to announce uh, some, you know, uh, that the pandemic's over and blah, blah, blah. Um, and they're going to open up the borders and stuff. I'm guessing that's going to come out in March, but, um, yeah, that's why I want to go out and film all these ancient towns because they're going to disappear. Um, these special things that only exist in certain parts of China or certain parts of a city, uh, certain parts of a province, they're going to disappear. Um, there was an old primitive tribe village in, uh, Yunnan province. Uh, the people called the Wa, W-A, the Wa people, W-A, the Wa people, their whole village burned down, you know, and it was the last like primitive tribal village in China and it's gone now, you know, and that's not because it was demolished or whatever, but it just burned. Um, and that's the sort of thing that I, I feel deeply sad about. Um, so yeah, I try to go around and visit uh, as many of these ancient towns as I can. So. Here, let's let's go down here. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. When I left China in 2018, I was convinced that the China I knew is gone, but there isn't a day that I don't miss it. Maybe I was wrong. Well, the thing is, yeah, and this is something that um, I feel like is not talked enough about. I'm gonna do that. This is something that's not talked enough about by China vloggers. And I hate this about the China vlogging community. The China vlogging community doesn't often, they, they too often forget the fact that China, the China experience is so diverse. Everyone has a different experience. Like everyone has the China that they know, you know, and the China that I know is probably different than the China that Alex knows. And if he feels like, the China that he knew is gone, well then fair enough to him, you know? Uh, if someone feels like the China that they know is still here, then fair enough, that's a valid point as well. Too many vloggers don't talk about how chi the China experience, the China experience doesn't exist. 
it's so diverse here. Everyone has a different experience. And that depends on where you live. Like I'm talking about where you rent a house. It depends on also what city you live in. It depends on what your job is. It depends on if you're in a relationship or not. If your relationship is with a foreigner or the Chinese, if you have Chinese friends, if you speak Chinese, and at what level is your Chinese? Are you on Chinese social media? Like so many things completely change your China experience. So, you know, that's, that's another thing. That's one thing that makes me unhappy about China is the China vlogging community. And I guess I'm more unhappy about the China vlogging community than, uh, than China itself, because those are two different things. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's about what I've heard. That's about what I've heard. 2006 to 2009 was when things really started to change. Um, I'm going to do, not a, I don't think I'm going to do a stream, but I'm going to do a video of some kind up in North Chengdu where it's still kind of old and it's still kind of like sketchy and really interesting, really, really different. Um, ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the earthquake as well would have done it. The earthquake would have done it. So, yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Bloggers in tier one cities claiming their China is all of China. Yeah. F that. I'm going to get demonetized if I say anything else. But yeah. Man, what is with those people, you know? It's so diverse here. You don't, you're not going to see this kind of thing in other cities. You're not going to see this kind of thing or this kind of thing in other cities. There's so many things. Like the food, the cultural experience, the attitudes of people are so different everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, the kinds of travel opportunities you have, um, the personality, the vibe of a city is so different from place to place. And even the vibe in like Yulin in Chengdu is really different from the vibe in Yoshiko in Chengdu. It's really different from the vibe in Taiku Li. Um, everything's so different. Everything's so different. So that's something that drives me nuts. Is 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 China vloggers? <laughs> is China vloggers? Let's see. Anything else? Anything else? Hmm. No, that's it. Okay. Wow, I got that in just about exactly an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back on the e-bike. And what we are going to do, any more comments? Let's see. <laughs> Taikuli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to Taikuli. We'll get there eventually. Um, yeah, I actually made a video about this, how the Chinese um, buy so many like foreign cars. Um, I had a take on it that I didn't quite like at the time, but um, I think you can still find the video if you, uh, if you search for it. So... We'll put the tripod away. We're going to hop back on the e-bike and we're going to just kind of maybe go along the river. How does that sound? How does that sound? We're going to go along the river. I'll answer a few of your, your questions and uh, respond to more comments and just kind of see, kind of see what's up, you know? Um, so there we go. Uh, let's see. Let me change the banner. Let me change the banner. Okay. Yes. Now we got a new ticker. It says, now we're chilling. I'll answer some questions. Super Chat's more than welcome. All of that sort of thing. All right. And by the way, if anyone is new here, if anyone is new here, there's a link in the description of the video that has my link tree. So link tree has all of my links on various social media, ways to uh, support the channel. So if you want to find me on Twitter or on Instagram, you can find me via that link tree. Um, and it's also got links to uh, like Patreon and buy me a coffee and some other things. So you can do that. And I'm going to add more, more links to that link tree with some cool resources uh, for China and Chinese, uh, like learning Chinese. And speaking of learning Chinese, <coughs> ugh, God, I hate bronchitis. Ugh. Maybe by next week I'll be better. But yeah, speaking of uh, learning Chinese, uh, I am getting back into learning Chinese. I am, uh, feeling really good about it. 
I'm feeling really good about it. I found some things that I am sufficiently interested in um, and that are at about my level. And I have a specific goal now of taking the HSK at the end of the year. And I want to see if I can take some... Uh, I know that there are interpretation exams, translation, like translator exams. And I think I want to make that a goal at some point too, maybe in a year and a half or two years from now, try some sort of interpretation job, translation job. And I might try also going back to stream to streaming on uh, Weibo because Weibo has a, a streaming um, platform built into it. Because I have like 110,000 followers on, on Weibo, so I know that people will watch. But I would stream in Chinese and communicate with people in Chinese. So if you want to follow me there, I'm at Landuolawai, the lazy foreigner. Landuolawai, the lazy foreigner. So Weibo is Chinese Twitter, for those of you who don't know. So if you've not been in Chengdu for a couple of years, this is going to be shocking, uh, this next little bit. This is also probably a little shocking as well because this is only opened in the last like year or so. Yeah, something like that. They widen the sidewalk. They knock down a bunch of buildings here. They widen the sidewalk, put in these trees, and they revamped these buildings right here on the first ring road. And they also finished the opera house. They finished the Sichuan or the Chengdu opera house, which is a big deal. It's a big, it's a, it's a massive building for one thing, but it also is, puts on tons of events. So this is probably pretty shocking to someone who hasn't been in Chengdu for, for a few years. Chengdu City Concert Hall. Okay, so it's the Chengdu Opera House Concert Hall thing. Yeah. So this thing is, uh, it's up and running. They're having events all the time. And um, oh, you see they're filming some kind of promo for it right here. So, yeah, there you go. Or it might not be for the concert hall specifically, but, you know, it's a promo all the same. It's a promo all the same. So there it is. It's a cool little piece of architecture. But, yeah, so learning, learning Chinese again, really enjoying it. It's fun. Uh, let's, let's check the comments. Wow, we got lots of comments. Let's see. Ah, okay. Short podcasts with transcripts. Hold on, I gotta, gotta stop this. Hey, shut up and you shut up. Jay Coleman and Rush International Capital, just shut up. No one cares about what you guys have to say about these kinds of things. I do not care. And nobody else cares about you guys. So, looking for short podcasts with transcripts to keep learning Chinese. Any ideas? Well, so there are two. Uh, the two oldest learn Chinese podcasts that I know are Chinese Pod, so Chinese Pod, and there's also Slow Chinese. So Slow Chinese and Chinese Pod are the two oldest ones. They're probably the two most well-known learn Chinese podcasts. And I was just suggested by um, one of my coworkers is big into learning Chinese. And she suggested listening to a podcast called Ting Gu Shi Xue Zhong Wen. So literally translated means listen stories, learn Chinese. So if you Google translate that, uh, if you don't speak any Chinese, then you might have to Google translate it. So listen stories, learn Chinese. And then it should translate into Ting Gu Shi Xue Zhong Wen. So you can listen to that. Those vary in length. Um, but I just started listening to that like a couple of days ago. I've only listened to like one episode. So, but it seems good so far. Seems good so far. Seems good. Sorry. All right. Now we're going to, we're at an hour four. So, actually, I may just turn around and kind of head back towards home. It's been a good stream, but I, uh, I'm getting sort of tired. 
No, it's called Ting Bu Shi Shui Zhongwen. Uh, no comma. Um, but yeah, that's that's close. Ting Bu Shi Shui Zhongwen. Or it may be Shui Han Yu. I can't remember. But uh, no comma. It's all one thing. You can find it on YouTube, actually. Um, if you want the transcripts, you do have to join their Patreon. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's a good one. You're not being blocked. I'm just telling you to shut up. Don't ar don't argue with people in the comments. You and whoever that other guy was, James. No, not James. Jay. Yeah. Nobody cares about what you guys have to say about politics or any of that. Nobody cares. I'm not going to block you, but nobody cares what you guys are talking about. So are the bars really borders really going to open in March? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that's my guess. That's going to be my guess. Okay. Mio Mayo recommends Grace Mandarin Chinese. That's great. Oh, I forgot Mandarin Corner. Mandarin Corner. I did a big interview with them. Um, I did a really big interview with them in Chinese. I forgot all about them. Yeah. Mandarin Corner is fantastic. Um, a lot of foreigners that I know here in China, uh, the expats that I know here who are studying Chinese, most of them use Mandarin Corner to one degree or another. So, yeah, that's a good one. Mandarin Corner. Um, but, yeah, this one might be good as well. Okay, there we go. So now we pulled up here to Sichuan University. There's the main gate of the campus. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's see. Not, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Not often enough for me to freak out about it. <laughs> yep, that's true. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, so this is a great question. What do you think makes a person get comfortable and not learn Chinese while in China? I'm wondering how to force myself to learn as much as possible while visiting China. Well, I'll tell you, um, it all depends on where you live. Uh, that's a big thing because not every city in China needs you to speak Chinese. Beijing, you don't need to speak Chinese ever. Not really. You don't ever need to speak Chinese in Beijing or Shenzhen. You know, Shanghai, you don't ever need to speak Chinese in those cities. Guangzhou, Chinese would be useful, but it's not super necessary. Chengdu is getting to the point where uh, more people are learning English here. But I think I still think Chinese is necessary to live here and to make things easy, um, to make things easier. Like Chinese will make things a lot easier, but... Most for most expats in China don't live in cities where Chinese is necessary. Like the foreigner capitals in China are Shanghai and Shenzhen. Uh, that's where most most foreigners are living, in Beijing as well. Like those three cities. Like if you don't need to learn a foreign language, would you? I guess that's really the question. If you don't need to learn a foreign language, would you? Most people would say no. Most people. Uh, would not want to learn a, a really difficult foreign language. Um, I'm going to switch switch hands and switch cameras because this this arm's getting tired. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. Would you? Um, I don't know. I'm the sort of person who is interested in Chinese, so I want to learn. But yeah, if you're in a place where like not knowing Chinese doesn't affect your life, then it doesn't matter. Or like if you're in a high enough, like if you're, if your job title is high enough, uh, your company will give you a translator and your coworkers will all speak English. Um, your coworkers will all speak English because, you know, most jobs in China revolve around teaching English. So if you're going to be teaching English, the other people in your department are going to speak English. Your supervisor is going to speak English. Your coworkers are all going to speak English. Um, that's just, that's a, that's a fact. So, um, you know, Chinese is something you actually do have to 
kind of be conscious about improving. Unless you're in like a tier three city, you know, like if you're in a lesser known city that's not frequented by expats, you're going to have to know Chinese. Like when I was in Lanzhou, very specific story. I was in Lanzhou and uh, in Lanzhou, nobody speaks English. Nobody speaks English in Lanzhou. Just fact, just fact. Um, so I had to learn Chinese really quick, really quick. I learned probably two years of Chinese in six months uh, just because it was necessary. You know, and my friends, my local friends didn't speak a lot of English. A couple of my friends didn't speak any English. So it's like, I want friends. Well, I got to learn some Chinese. But, you know, not every place is like that. And I remember this guy coming into the university. He was like, uh, he was a teacher in Beijing. And uh, he had been in Beijing for four years or five years. And he came to uh, the university in Lanzhou. He called it like a work vacation because he was doing like some big shot job in, in Beijing. He was doing some job and he, he said Lanzhou was a work vacation. For, uh, okay. I mean, if you're a teacher, I don't think you should ever consider that a work vacation. But anyway, and he was so impressed by the Chinese that uh, this is not nice. <laughs> they're, they're building this. He was so impressed by the Chinese of everyone uh, in our department. But like everyone in our department only spoke like basic to like intermediate Chinese. And he was so blown away that people could work in China and also learn Chinese because he never needed Chinese in Beijing. Like that's an illustration just from my life. Uh, true story. True story. Um, but yeah, you just have to force yourself. You have to find a goal. You have to find a goal. Uh, as well, you have to have something to work towards because if you're just like, if you're just like, oh, learning Chinese is fun, then you're less likely to make a real progress. So have a goal, have a goal that you can sustain. Uh, when I get, when I get over this bridge, I'll flip the camera around and I'll check a couple of comments. All right, all right. There you go. Multitasking, multitasking. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. Um, we're going to close the stream in the next 10, 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes. So just to let you know, sorry, I'm so sorry that this is going to be very bumpy. Very bumpy. Okay. All right. Let's head over this way. Okay. We're going to stop right here, flip the camera around, and then we'll be off to the races. I like this format of live streaming. This is fun. This is fun. Yes, that was Zhou Yanqiao. Yeah, that was the Nine Eye Bridge right there. Yeah, and Jining. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just then I was going north. Just then I was going north. Oh, snap. Kale. Oh, man. Hold on. We got to flip this around again so I can say a proper thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Kale. <laughs> kale chips. <laughs> Big shout out to kale chips. Kale chips. Yeah. The least delicious form of chip that there is. <laughs> thank you so much. For the super chat, I think that's that's one of the biggest ones I've ever gotten. So, you know, big big shout out to you. Thank you so much. Um, from Michigan, yeah. Well, shout out to Michigan as well. Thanks so much, Kale Chips. Um, yes. So there we go. Yes, I agree. Don't be that guy. Yeah. What kind of what kind of person is that who moves to a country with such a different language and such a different culture and then doesn't bother to partake in any of that. What does that say about you as a person? You know, um, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, okay. 
an internship there for two weeks. Okay, all right. Very good. What? I've not heard anything about this. I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's probably... You know what? I wouldn't doubt that that's correct. I would not doubt that. Um, delivery drivers are flying down the street. Is that a Ford F-150? Hold on. I never see freaking pickup trucks here in China. Whoa. I'm freaking out right now. I never see pickup trucks in China. That is so rare. That is so rare to see a pickup truck. Oh, my God. Texan freaks out about pickup truck. New title of the video. <laughs> Meme it up. Meme it up. Uh, yeah. Wow, that was weird. Um, well, there you go. Let's pull over for a second. Ah, yeah, I don't doubt that. They're flying by. This is a great question. This is a great question. What HSK level is the one that made the biggest change in your adaptability? Now, I want to go on record and say the HSK is not the be-all and end-all. It's not the be-all and end-all, and it's not even necessarily a fantastic way of assessing language proficiency. Now, that being said, that being said, because the HSK is a standardized exam uh, with a specific vocabulary list and vocabulary set, it is, it is probably overall the best way to communicate uh, your Chinese level. So, because, um, yeah, I'm taking the HSK 6 at the end of the year, and I looked at a, um, I looked at a practice exam, and it's stupid. The practice exam is so stupid. It's not realistic Chinese. Sorry. Ugh. New subway stop. We're going to stop here for a second and look at the river. Um, I would say probably level four. When I got to about HSK four, that was the biggest game changer in terms of... Uh, my ability to communicate overall. Yes, I would probably say that. HSK 4. Because HSK 4 puts you firmly into intermediate territory. And intermediate is really where you want to get to in language study, to be honest. This area is almost done. Whoop. Let me take it easy on the shaky cam. Because on my... On the screen here, it looks steady, but I know at home it's real shaky. Okay. So, yeah, HSK4, I would say, it puts you firmly in intermediate, and intermediate's where you want to be because then you can at least have conversations with people, at least on a superficial level, or at least like a, you know, kind of okay level on most topics. And I think that's what you want, really. At least that's that's the biggest like game changer in terms of like um, noticeable improvements and noticeably being comfortable. So that's what I would say. That's what I would say. HSK is for foreign students to get scholarships. Well, yes, um, but it's also the only Mandarin Chinese proficiency exam out there. It's the only like standardized like Mandarin proficiency exam out there. Like there are other institutions that have um, like proprietary like proficiency exams but in terms of like one that's um, like by Chinese people for people learning Chinese and it's been like and it's like official that's the only one that I know of so yes well thank you another super chat Jonathan wait Jonathan Jonathan Jonathan. Is this the Jonathan that lives in Chengdu? Because I think he has a similar last name, which is a funny thing. Like, you'll never know your friend's last names in China. You'll never know your friend's last names in China. You only know their first names. But, 
Even if you're not the Jonathan and Chengdu, thank you very much for the super chat. I agree with what you're talking about. Pass for the 188. Okay. I mean, hey, that's you just you barely you just barely got in there. Keep going, man. Keep going. I I I um I applaud anyone who's out there trying to uh, to learn a language, any language, um, any language whatsoever, because like I've realized that learning a language is such a like it's a it's such a game changer. It it really makes a huge difference in the way that you think and the way that you act and um and in terms of job opportunities that can arise and things like that. Um it's a big thing. So yeah, good luck to you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wheels down, new to the stream. Do you plan to be go uh, vaccinated? This was in this question came up. So this is Sichuan University right here. They're building a new museum right here along with um, a couple of, are they research buildings? I can't remember. But yeah, museum's going to be there, research buildings. That's, um, <coughs> that's the uni that I work at. I don't plan on getting the vaccination at the moment. Uh, I am not a first gen, I'm not a first generation adopter of anything. Phones, software updates, um, like new phones, new cameras, like nothing. I don't adopt anything first generation. Um, that's my personal stance. Uh, there we go. <laughs> let's make it rain. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, yeah, that's funny. Um, oh, oh, man, there we go. Oh, man, this is this has been an insane stream for super like i am blown away right now i have i um i <laughs> i did not expect even remotely this like i mean i'm i'm lucky if i get one per stream like a like a two dollar super chat in a stream like much less i mean you guys are so you're so generous i mean big shout out to you guys and you're already my patron you're already on patreon and you're still you're still throwing throwing money at me I uh, I appreciate that, man. I really do. Um, oh, you lived in Qin Huangdao. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, Keenan. Big shout out to Keenan. Uh, love that guy, man. Good guy, good guy. Um, back in Canada now, uh, out of China, unfortunately. But I mean, hey, you know, he can't stay in China forever. And uh, you know, I hope he's doing well. I really do. I wish the guy all the best. Keenan's a great guy. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know what to do at this point. I don't even know what to do at this point. Oh my God. This is so crazy. Uh, I just, just thank you. And also from Dr. Death as well, who by the name, by the way, has an awesome username. It's one of my favorite usernames because every time it comes up, I'm like, I know exactly who Dr. Death is. Um, I know exactly who Dr. Death is. And it's one of my favorite usernames. Except, um, but I'll tell you my favorite YouTube username. Uh, my favorite YouTube username uh, that I have seen in various uh, creepypasta videos and uh, like weird documentary videos there's a there's a youtube user with the name just some bigfoot with internet access <laughs> and he writes he writes comments um you know like he is a bigfoot he writes about living in the forest and ha you know and like that the wi-fi is going out in the forest so he hasn't posted in a while or he posts about like you know, warning hikers to stay away from, you know, his nest or whatever. It's really funny. But yeah, you, him and Dr. Death uh, have some of my favorite usernames. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right, I'm going to pull up here and then flip the camera back around so you can see Wangjiang Lo Park, my favorite park in all of China. Favorite park in all of China. Hmm. We're going to get up here to the intersection and pull over safely, safely. We're gonna safely pull over. I'll put the phone down like this because I'm just passing a policeman. Uh, the police probably would not look too kindly on me live streaming. 
uh, while <laughs> while I'm uh, on an e-bike. I mean, they're not really going to care, but, you know. <laughs> okay, all right, we've got to stop this. We've got to stop this. Um, this just feels like it's becoming a meme. We got we to gotta put this to rest. <laughs> Uh, oh man yeah yeah that's that's where we were just now that's correct yeah so Dongmen means east gate Chuan Da means uh, Sichuan University so yeah we were just across from the east gate of Sichuan University and we're getting back into more of my area of town wait where's the uh, where's the building oh there it is so you can see that little pagoda it's not a pagoda what is that a pavilion that is a pagoda right over there i get so many of these words mixed up even after living in china forever i've been here a decade a third of my life has been in china and i still forget the difference between a pavilion and a pagoda because i just see them all the time that it's almost like interchangeable i was going to show you wangjong low park but there's still construction here Oh, here we go. I knew there was going to be an open spot somewhere. There it is. My favorite park in China. I don't know what they're going to do with this. This is not pretty. There it is. So, yeah, now we're at Wangjianglo Park. Hey, follow along on the map, everybody. There you go. So this is the Wangjiang. This is to Wangjiang means to look at the river. So Wang means to look. And Jiang means river. So to look at the river. And this is the Wangjiang building right there across from us. And uh, I made a video about this park because it is by far my favorite park in China. By far. Definitely my favorite in Chengdu. Best park in town. Yes. Oh, yes. I know exactly who you are. <laughs> I know exactly who you are. You are the new, the new patron from yesterday. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like people who like People's Park in Chengdu, I don't trust them. Like if anyone says, oh, I really enjoy Renmin Gongyuan, I'm like, are you crazy? I don't trust you. It's like someone who says that they like uh, Bitter Melon. It's like someone who says they like Kukwa. I don't trust those people. Um, yeah. So... Oh gosh, yeah! Don't 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 do that! Don't do that! Uh, great supine in foot. What? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <coughs> Is that a bit of? <coughs> Excuse me. Is that a bit of Chinglish or? Uh... Oh, I can cross now. Let me cross now. I gotta cross. Okay. This intersection's super confusing because they're building everything so fast and they're doing the roads so quickly. Everything's so confusing. Uh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, we have one from Clausen. A pagoda is tiered tower with multiple eaves coming. Ah, okay. So it is a pagoda. Thank you, Clausen. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. I could use that. Yeah. So pagoda. And uh, there we go. Now we know what a pagoda is. Everyone's learning. Everyone's learning. This is another intersection that's real confusing. Drives me nuts. But there you go. But there you go. Okay. Late to the stream, Christopher James. What is up? What is up, Christopher James? Uh, not a lot, man. Just uh, just chilling, living life. Just living life. Answering a few questions. Talking about what makes me unhappy. But now we're just to the chill part of the stream. We're to the chill part of the stream. All right, I can go now. All right, here we go. We've got our friendly neighborhood construction workers. Awesome. Yeah, see this little... This, this is not good. Okay. All right. I like this street. Okay. 
So yeah, what's up? Not not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. So Christopher, you're gonna go back to the beginning, watch the stream. Well, yeah, I mean you could do that because that's actually the content of this stream. Um, so yeah, there is a well named the Shreytao. Yep, well Shreytao is a female. She wrote pretty interesting poems about her. That's right. Yeah, and um, yeah, the paid entrance. Like I said before, I made a video about this park. So if you search, uh, be if you uh, YouTube search best park in Chengdu you will find my video. Um, and yeah, I do talk about that that bit of history. Um, in the video, I talk about Shui Tao and I talk about um, what the Wang Jianglo Pavilion actually, or Pagoda is for. And I talk about the Jin, Jin Zhuo Pavilion. I talk about, you know, the, the things in the paid section of the park. So yeah, you can definitely check that out. You can search best uh, park in Chengdu. But of course, after the stream, right? After the stream. I cannot believe we still have 51 people on this stream. That's crazy to me that we still have so many people uh, that are willing to stick around for so long. I mean, I'm sure there are people popping in and out, but it, uh, it blows me away. Because, I don't know, I just never thought about streaming, like, seriously. Because I guess I was streaming at the wrong time. This seems to be the right time to stream. Hey, check that out. Hot Pot Restaurant. There you go. In front of another building. There. Okay. Yeah. Camera. Yeah. See a little bit of this ugly mug for a bit. Let's see what's going on here. I'm not even, I'm not sure exactly where that is. <laughs> yep, I know the Chung, I know the Chengdu rap scene. I know all about it. I know more than I should. I'm not a fan. Um, I mean, I get, uh, rap is just not for me. Hip hop is not for me. It's not a thing that I enjoy. So, I mean, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's not a thing that I enjoy listening to. It's not a, like hip hop culture, rap culture is not something I am particularly fond of. So, you know, yeah, it's definitely a big, it's a big cultural force. In let's see, how can I do this? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the best angle. But yeah, it's a big cultural force in Chengdu, rap, hip hop, and uh, also EDM. EDM is a big thing in Chengdu as well. Like Chengdu is one of the main cities in China that people come to uh, to like be a DJ. They come to DJ here. There's so many like EDM studios, like music production studios. Um, you know, it does rap as well. I mean, music studios will cater to any artist, right? But yeah, rap and EDM seem to be the big the big genres here. So yeah, there we go. What's going on? Oh, okay. All right. No classes this morning. Uh, you've been to this hot pot restaurant? That's funny. Yeah. Let me put it like that. See a little bit of. See a little bit of that. Um. Chengdu police officers. I mean, they're fine. Uh. It all depends on the police officer, you know. Some police officers are super cool. Some are super chill. I will say this about policemen here um most policemen that you see just on the street are super happy to help you out they're they're super happy to help you out if you need directions if you're looking for something um if you just have a general question about getting around like they're super is that a it's ferrari right lamborghini ferrari ferrari lamborghini i don't know what kind of car is that they all sort of they all sort of run together for me. <laughs> they all seem they all sort of run together for me. In Chengdu, Chengdu's got so much money. You see so many luxury cars that they just sort of blend together. Um, I used to know oh Aston Martin, Lamborghini, like Lotus, uh, freaking I don't even know the names anymore. So I just don't care. Yeah, police officers are pretty pretty chill, man. Um, but I have met some police officers in Chengdu who are absolutely not chill. Um, 
very stern, very strict. Um, but I would say the vast majority of the police officers are they're pretty cool, man. I mean, regardless of what people do here, people are people, you know. It's all good. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to stereotype uh, just because someone's a police officer in China that they're automatically going to be like some super unhappy, angry communist, blah blah blah. Like, nah, people are still people. I mean, they got jobs to do, but you know, at least. At least the police officers on the street. Ah, fine, whatever. <laughs> I was more excited about the F one fifty. Well, yeah, because I see sports cars every single day here. I see sports cars every single day. I don't care about sports cars, but yeah, I do see. I do not see Ford F one fifties around. It's so rare to see an American pickup truck. Like, that's the thing to get excited about is the thing you don't see very much. And also, being from Texas, I think, like, half of every, like, one half of every vehicle in Texas is a pickup truck. I think, like, every, you know, if there are two vehicles in Texas, one of them is a pickup truck. Like, just by the statistics. Or maybe it's a third. I'm not sure. But, you know, seeing pickup trucks is a, a, little, a little callback. It's a little callback. Okay. So here, let's let these people get off the bus. Okay. Yeah, so this meme is going around. I don't know where this meme came from. So I remember this this sounding familiar. So this person recommends going to our Xianqiao and also Chenghua Da Dao. Uh, yeah, Chenghua Da Dao. Like, I've seen this in a couple of comments, and uh, I checked it out on, on the street view, and there's nothing up there. There's nothing around there. And it's funny, because, like, I, rem I remember being familiar with that area, but I got it confused with another area. Yeah, I've been up there a couple of times. There's nothing interesting. So, yeah, this is some sort of meme, some sort of joke. I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah, some sort of meme, some sort of joke. Uh. So there you go. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. Huh. Oh, boy. Um, so this is a question that I may have to screenshot. Uh, I may have to screenshot, screen shoot, take a screenshot. I don't know. I feel like screenshot is a, it can be a verb as well, but it feels weird. So I'm going to screenshot this question and maybe dedicate a separate video to that because that's such a complicated question. It's, um, it's not an easy question to answer. So here, I'm going to save that. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Bill. Bill, 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 Bill Nye, the science guy. If Bill's, if Bill's the same guy that I remember, I think he's from Tianjin. So maybe not necessarily the Chinese guy or not necessarily the scientist. So really, Klaus is just full of information, man. He's got all kinds of info about, about stuff I was not privy to. So that's why I never saw the Ford F-150 before. That's one of the first times I've ever seen, I've ever seen it. So, okay, 2019. So anyway, Bill, let's get back to Bill's question. Um, university game still on? Uh, as far as I know, yes. As far as I know, the university games are still on. They are still a thing. And I'm going to be doing a video talking about the changes that Chengdu... <laughs> Well, there goes that Ferrari again. Yep. Uh, so anyway, um, as far as I know, those games are still on. Everything's good to go. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to make a separate video about the changes that Chengdu is putting into place uh, for those university games. Because it's very obvious. It's very evident 
that the games are coming. Um, it's very obvious that the games are coming. It's um, oh, there we go. So. <laughs> I like that comment. That's funny. That makes me laugh. Uh, there's some migrant workers over there. That's what you're talking about. Migrant workers are awesome. Migrant workers are salt of the earth people. Um, they're salt of the earth people. Now, they're not. How should I say this? How should I say this? Um, migrant workers, are, they're not as cosmopolitan. I suppose, as like people who grew up in big cities, because they are people who come in to these big cities and they work really hard jobs um, to do things like build the city. People who work on construction crews here are largely migrant workers, and they are busting their backs to make China the place that it is. Um, for, for very little money uh, and for very few benefits. They do it so they can send money back to their family so their families can have a better life. Um, so, I mean, when you meet these people, like you realize migrant workers are just normal people. They're, they may not be super educated. They may not be the uh, most like quote unquote cosmopolitan but they're just like normal people. They're blue collar workers, just like, you know, anyone else in any country, you know, it'd be like, it would be like meeting a construction worker in the USA, you know, it's no different. It's just, uh, Oh, there it is. There's that, uh, right there. All right. So we're back at Neil Wong now where I think I did some of my last stream. So we're kind of going in circles. Uh, it's been fun. I'm gonna look at one or two more questions, and then we're gonna we're gonna head out. I'm gonna head back home because it's been nearly two hours. It's been a super fun live stream. I've really enjoyed it, actually. I've really enjoyed it. A um, lot of interaction. A lot of people. A lot of people in here. Uh, so let's see. So I will end it on. Nope, not microphone. Don't turn off the microphone. Okay. There you go. There we go. Oh, my phone is also on 18% as well. So we're going to end the stream about right here. We have migrant workers. They're, um, they're working really hard. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, they're mostly in big cities. It's, it's tough. It's a tough life. And they're, they're really busting their butts to work here. So, you know, Everyone really needs to appreciate what those people do here. Um, it's an invaluable service that they provide so that we can live, you know, the lives that we live in these mega cities. Um, so we have to appreciate what these migrant workers are doing. Um, so there you go. All right. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you all very much for watching. It's been a great time. Uh, I've really, <laughs> this has been uh the best stream. Uh, I've, I was just going to do an hour. I was just going to do an hour, but it's been, it's been fun. I'm really enjoying this, um, this like e-bike thing, just kind of driving around, just driving around, just having a good time talking with you guys. So, um, that's it. I'm going to head home. I'm going to make another cup of coffee. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to have for lunch. I'm going to get back on my Chinese study, look at, um, stuff for the university, kind of put my, like, put the finishing touches on my curriculum uh, for this, uh, this semester, and that'll be it, so thank you all very much, please check out the, uh, yeah, you can check out channel memberships, you can check out Patreon or buy me a coffee, or you know what, don't do that, just go live your life, you know, just go live your life, and uh, I will see you all next time, I suppose.